How you doing, Steve Noble, Noble Moto? What we're gonna do today is we're gonna replace out the stator on my 05 Harley Dyna. This one is still technically working, but uh, it's got you know, almost 60,000 miles on it. Uh, I'm gonna put a new drive belt and pulley on it anyways. The primary's gotta come off. So for insurance, um, I'm just gonna put a new one on there anyways. Because uh, it's probably getting close to about time. Um, that's all I really got. Uh, yep, let's get right to it. All right, first thing we're gonna do here we're going to change it or drain the uh, oil out of the primary. There's a little plug down here. Uh, in this case, it's held on by a, a hex head bolt, which takes a 7 16 wrench. Uh, sometimes you'll find there's an Allen key up in there. Um, and you want to be careful when doing this because there's a pretty fine thread down in here and it's easy to strip it out. So, but you have to work at it, you have to force it, kind of work it in and out as you go. Uh, to make sure it's plate for every thread. Whoop. Here we go. Primer oil's drain out. Smells like primer oil. There's a little O-ring on there. Uh, right there. Gonna want to put a new one on there when we uh, put it back together. Keep it from leaking. Next step, while that's draining, got a uh, 5 16th Allen here. Uh, it's on a socket, on a ratchet. Uh, we're gonna pull the foot peg off with it. Two bolts on here. That one and that one. Should come out relatively easy. One bolt. That's a little cruddy. some reason you have to replace these bolts remember they're three uh, or um get uh get a grade eight bolt um, to put in there there you go you can see all your road grime and shit down there uh, there's that next step pull the shifter off here there's a little uh 5 18 bolt goes right here takes a half inch wrench back it right off should thread right out should thread right out. And then it's on a spline shaft, so just a little shifter off just like that. Ta -da. Now, I'll keep track of these things. Put the bolt back in there. Next step from there, remove our inner primary plate, or our uh, shifter plate here. Sorry, this is a, well, normally this is a Torx bit, it's like T25 or T27, something like that. But uh, I really hate Torx bits, so I put Allen wrenches in almost all of them. Except these two, which I will replace those with Allen bolts. Give that a minute, let the uh, last of the oil drain out of there before we pop the last bolt out. Um, then it should come off with a nice little dead tap from Dead Blow Mallet. I'm gonna grab the edges and work it, and it should pop right on out of there. All right, most of the oil is drained out, so we're gonna pull the last bolt off of here. All right, more oil might come out of the front here, so just be ready for it.
just like that. So you're going to rag down here, down front. In there. Good. Looks like we got a bolt. Slide right out of it. Ah! Forgot one. Ta-da! Here's your primary cover. Set that off to the side. If your hands are clean, take your gasket, carefully set that off to the side as well. All right, so next step from here, uh, we're gonna pull the uh, primary setup off. So first we're gonna pull off the tensioner shoe here. I'm gonna take that out and take the shifter shaft out. Uh, now we'll relieve our tension. Um, Oh, wait, hold on. Before we do that, we have to break these nuts free. So, before we do that, we're going to break uh, both our nuts free here to get this off. So, let's get to that. All right, here we go. Uh, so, what we're going to do to hold this whole thing in place is we got this primary locking tool. I bought this on Amazon for eight bucks. We should focus a little better there. There we go. Uh, it's a piece of nylon. Um, you stick it in there. It's going to load up on itself as we crank it loose. This one is normal right-hand thread, so lefty-loosey. Um, this is an inch and three-eighths socket. Um, you can pick these up, I don't know, wherever. You got any inch and three-eighths socket for this sucker. Now keep in mind, this is not a stock compensator. I have the BDL compensator on here, and I went down a tooth. Um, take some speed away off the crank, give me a little more low end. So from there, now this sucker has Loctite on it, if I remember right, and it's torqued to some absurd tension. So, it's going to take a lot of force to get this thing free. Woo! A lot of people use impact to help use the shock to break this thing free. Woo! Or you just pull on it. There we go. Not there yet. This just goes down the end of your crank, so don't screw around with this and you know, force anything and damage any threads. Threads look good there. Thing looks good on our spacer. And carefully set this to the side to play environment. That'll be ready to come off. Now, we go to the back one. It's gonna be left hand threads. Set that up there. Okay. All right, back here, we have to pull, we have to pull this serenade nut off of here, uh, and then we're gonna pull this snap ring off. First thing I'm gonna do is pull the snap ring off. So you're gonna need some snap ring pliers. Come down there in a little groove. Be ready in case it goes into orbit when it comes out of there. And what's that? Not going to orbit, still here. Also, put this in a safe, clean environment. Sort of. All right, now we're gonna take an Allen wrench and a box in wrench. We're gonna break this there. Now we can remove this and take our adjustment out, which honestly, by the play up, I think it might not have been perfect adjustment. But uh, we're gonna pop this sucker out of here, Should slide right out. Also put this in safe, clean environment. All right, so back in here, there's a nut. Hopefully you can see that. There it kind of focuses. Back in there. All right, so from there, inch and 316 socket. Focus, please. Focus, please. Thank you. So inch 316 socket back in there. We're going to take... We've got our primary locking tool up in here. Now this one, like I said before, is left hand thread. So, lefty loosey, or lefty tighty, righty loosey. So, lock that up. Alright, 
So, primary logging tools in place. The primary cover out, so I'm not putting my hands there. And lean down on it. And watch your knuckles. There we go. Up three, just like that. Now, as I forgot to earlier, I'm going to take the tensioner off of here. Now that the primary is loose, or the primary components are loose, we'll just let that drop free. Should be enough. Space. It looks like there was some grit in there. I don't believe it was from the socket. Yeah, maybe a little, little lock bait. Alright, next step from here. Moment of truth. You mind this thing might be sharp. Take a primary locking tool out of there. I'm going to slide the whole thing off. Hopefully you can see that. Whole thing off is one. Ta-da! Alright, so what we got going on here, stator is back behind this sucker. Um, this thing, it's, the stator itself is magnetic. So there's always going to be kind of some weirdness going on to taking this apart. Like there's a spacer here that goes with the primary. It's just kind of hanging out because magnetic. Put that somewhere safe and clean. I'm going to take this little cover here. Can't hook it with two Allen wrenches here. It's all of a sudden going to pop free here. Oop. As soon as it releases the magnetism. Ta da! There's your magnet. This is what actually, uh. Yeah, there's little metal shavings in there. Look at that. This is what actually charges your bike. Hopefully you can see this. There's some little metal shavings here stuck in the magnet. The pieces parts inside there, so we're definitely going to clean that out. Hopefully you can see that. See the metal shavings? Right down there. Um, so the spinning of this, this is attached to your crank, uh, and then your stator is in a fixed location. So the spinning of this past these little coils is what generates the electricity uh, that charges your battery. Um, produces AC current, Three-phase AC, goes into your regular rectifier, rectifies it down DC voltage, regulates it down 14.4 uh, to 13.2, um, 13.0, whatever. And uh, yeah, then charges your battery with it. Uh, any excess electricity that's not used gets shed off in the form of heat on your right rectifier, which is hanging out up here. So, there you have that. Put this somewhere safe and clean. All right, so we're down here at the front of the bike. Front engine mount, frame, you get so a regular rectifier plug is right here. So we're going to take this little screw off right here. Um, then we should be able to pull the rubber boot back and unplug it. So. Get that off of there. Hopefully you can see this. I have a challenge to do it with my hands in here and the camera and everything. The sucker should just slide right back off of there. There it goes. A little spring tab right there on my thumb. Hopefully you can see that. And ta-da! Plug is off. Right, we're back. So, got a T27 uh, Torx bit here. We're going to take the T27 Torx bit. Break them all free. All four of them. Did I say three? Oh, there's four. So 
one of the things you're going to notice with your new stator is you have these plugs on here. The stock one has this. That means you have to take this apart. So, um, all right, here's what I learned. So I just cut the wire off because it make it a little easier for it to look at. And uh, really, I just have to save the plug, not the wire. So here's what I learned so far from the shop manual. This thing here is just grab that pair of pliers and whoop, look at that, the sucker pops right out of there. So, now there's these little locking tabs down in there. Let's try it with some better lighting here. Okay. Oh, you see the little locking tabs down there? Let me get a flathead screwdriver and I'll show you. Focus. All right, so down in there, there's these little locking tabs. Can you see that? No, I'm asking you. It's not like you're going to respond. Trust me, they're there. There's these little locking tabs. There we go. All right, so we're going to try to push one of those out of the way and should be able to push the pin back through there. So, if you're nervous, I don't know, how much can this plug cost? Probably jinx myself by saying that. So we're sliding that out. Holy crap, look at that. Came right there. Okay, so there's a little rubber grommet on the back of that thing, so you're going to have to be careful of that. Let's do another one. So, slide that out of there. Try to get it so you can see it. Gonna be a video in itself. Slide that little tab out and pull the wire back on out, out the back side, just like that. Watch a little rubber waterproof grommet. Ta -da! All right, next step around the front here. You can see this little rubber grommet here. So we're gonna take that. We're gonna push that back in there. And hopefully, not too much resistance. It'll go back into uh, the engine case there. Of course, since we are not reusing this, we don't damage about worry about damaging the wires while we push on with the screwdriver. I think it's partially way in there. Let's see if it comes out. So from there, I slide the stator out. Whoop! Wires came off. So give our stator a little inspection. Um, overall. Looks pretty good here. It does look a little dust discolored here. Maybe that was heat. Maybe that was the oil. It's hard to say. It still ohmed out fine. Um, it may have been good for another 20,000 miles or so, but they don't give you much warning when they go out. So, so we're putting a new one on there. So, there you have that. All right, next step around the front here. You can see this little rubber grommet here. So we're gonna take that, we're gonna push that back in there. And hopefully, not too much resistance. It'll go back into uh, the engine case there. Of course, since we are not reusing this, it don't damage about worry about damaging the wires while we push on with the screwdriver. Uh, I think it's partially way in there. Let's see if it comes out. So from there, I slide the stator out. Whoop. Wires came off. So, give our stator a little inspection. Um, overall, looks pretty good here. It does look a little dust discolored here. Maybe that was heat. Maybe that was the oil. It's hard to say. It still ohmed out fine. Um, it may have been good for another 20,000 miles or so, but they don't give you much warning when they go out. So, that's why we're putting a new one on there. So, all right. So, our new stator right here. I'm gonna slide the little weatherproof seal off. So we can keep track of that. And uh, if you look here, this thing's gonna go all the way through, and then this little flat tab stops it. It's gonna go all the way through the case. Then. So we're gonna take the wires, slide them on through the hole there. Ah, right. Slide them right on through the hole there. Round and soft here and push on the back of the grommet. Push it on through. Alright, so I, uh, I got the wires through. I ended up having to take it out and do it a few times, but uh, 
I got I put some primary oil on the uh, rubber boot there just to help uh, lubricate it and uh, head on in here. Hopefully it shows up. Okay, see a little rubber grommet back in there? Yeah, okay, that's got to be flat up against the back of the uh, primary case. So we're going to rotate that a little bit um, just to make sure it has good clearance and it's not getting hot, hit by our stator uh, or the magnet cover that goes over the stator. We're going to slide this back in there. Rotate that back a little more flush. I'm going to eye up where the hole the rotation of the holes, relation of the stator. And this should just slide right over top. Check, make sure our grommet's flush. Back up against the back. On the outside of the grommet, everything's tight. Everything's seating the place. We are sitting pretty. Now, from here, we're going to really, uh, there's some thread locker on these things. Um, but uh, I don't have any mild strength, medium strength thread locker here, so. Uh, we're just going to tentatively put them back in so you can see what's going on after I throw one of the screws on the floor. Alright, so anyways, there we go. T27 Torx bits. Screw. These go ahead torque down to 50 inch pounds, I believe is what the shop manual said. So we're going to want to carefully rotate this. Get the screws line up. This is definitely going to be one of those things where you want to start them all in there with your fingers and torque them down with a crisscross pattern because you don't want that thing to bind up and cock. You definitely don't want these screws to eventually be loose and back on out of there. We're just going to thread them in there. Get the one dropped on the floor. <clears throat> Alright, so up here at the front, we got our little rubber grommet. So we're going to slide each wire on through the rubber grommet here. And that is AC, so there is no orientation, just however it goes on there. Actually, we're going to slide them back off. We're going to take our little weather sleeve here. We're going to slide it. That over top. Look at that. Fancy. I knew what we were doing. Now we're going to slide our little rubber grommet over here. Make sure you got the uh, correct side pointing out. And we're going to slide this back up the wire some so we got a little room to work with these three here. Now we're going to take a little plastic housing. Remember those little locking tabs back in there? Yep, hopefully you remember that. So, we're going to slide these into the three holes there. Make sure you orientate it the right way. So you can't do all three at once. We cannot. So we'll do it one at a time. Okay. So when you do this, you want to make sure your little clip and everything is pointing in the right direction. So, it goes in from this side, pointing forward. Look at that, it goes in way easier that way. All right, so, we go to each wire here, slide the rubber ground back, go to each wire, make sure it snaps in place. And we're going to pull on each wire, make sure it's snapped in. One doesn't want to snap in. I think it snapped in there. Alright, so now we're going to slide the rubber grommet in the back there. I don't know if you can even see any of this. There. Slide the rubber grommet in the back. Alright, now we're going to take the little rubber, the orange plastic thing. Right down there from the front, see if it snaps everything into place. It should just snap right in there. Remember how easily it came out? So it's not. So I have technical issues going on here. Ta da! Look at that. Push a rubber grommet in from behind. Hopefully, you could saw any of that that was going on there. And uh, yeah, there you go. So from there, Plug, plug her on in. Slide the rubber boot over it. Slide it back up inside the rubber boot, just like that. 
Start your Allen screw in there. Note I said Allen, not Torx bits. And take your Allen wrench, and tighten her back on down. All right, there you have it. All right, it's pretty much state of repair. Like I said, uh, from here, we're going to do a, we'll put Loctite on these, and then we'll torque them down in a crisscross pattern. Um, yeah, and then after that, uh, put your primary, put your uh, cover back on with the magnets on it, so it just slide right back on over there. Then reassemble the rest of your primary. You're ready to rock and roll. Uh, start your bike up, check your voltage. Make sure you're getting out, uh, you know, 13 to 13 volts to 14.6. Get your battery with the bike running. Um, yeah, and uh, you're ready to ride. That's all I got.